Hey everyone, welcome to today's uh, episode of What Does Hien Think? Um, so, I am going to talk about today, what I'm going to be talking about today is how long I think the virus is going to last. So let's get started. So, alright. So what to do, all right? So anyways, I was doing some research on the coronavirus and it turns out that this coronavirus is, um, I don't think there's gonna be a, uh, a vaccine for it. Uh, reason why is like, think about this, HIV. Uh, we have the HIV virus and I was kind of like, dude, what kind of virus is HIV? And looking at this, I was like, dude, this is like, that looks like a coronavirus, right? And how long has this been around? Like 20, 30 plus years? Who knows? I don't know. Um, and yeah, HIV is a coronavirus. We have no vaccine for that. I don't think this is a cure for hep... Is there hepatitis B? Maybe there is. Okay. But is that a coronavirus? I guess it is. It's not, not as pokey, I guess. Influenza. There's a herpes virus. Uh, that looks like a coronavirus too. I don't know about all these other viruses. Probably... Papillomavirus. I think there's, I don't know. But anyways, the fact that there's no cure for HIV is my my take on this. Like if they haven't found a cure for that, and all they have is antivirals, then they're probably not gonna find a virus um, thing for um, for Corona either. Okay. Now we have antivirals for HIV, which is also used as the same. We're also using the same thing for uh, for for treatment for um, Corona. For what was that that. Out of, that Vendisivir, <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to pronounce it. But anyways, uh, so yeah, it seems to work for that too, for, for malaria and whatnot, and all this other stuff. So, I personally don't think that there's gonna be a cure anytime soon. Maybe a treatment, okay, which could help. All right. So if it's still around and no one's, you know, still not, you know, immune to it, um, basically. The cure's not coming anytime soon, okay? So study the influenza flu, the Spanish flu in 1918. I mean, it lasted for about one and a half years, okay? And not only that, there was like three waves of this mutation, okay? So it came and those big millions, millions of people died uh, in 1918. We're not there yet. I mean, we're in the millions infected, but, you know, hundreds of, hundred thousand maybe already dead. So... And we're just like in the first quarter, you know, and this thing went for a year and a half. So, um, yeah. And then on top of that, once you find, let's say you do find a vaccine, well, guess what? It probably mutated by then on the second and third wave. You got to find another vaccine for that. Okay. And yet you haven't found it for HIV. So I don't know. Okay. Not riffing it. I'm just saying what I've observed. So what to do so i think you know masks would be a daily part of life and restaurants just won't be the same again uh, it'll probably be all converted to takeout and uh it'll probably be food shortages too with the uh, less consumption all these farmers aren't able to deliver their food unless the government goes in and bails them out again because uh if they're already losing on that money on, on all this food crop they, they have to spend another you know 50 percent to harvest it and on top of that, transport it to you so they can just donate it, right? Uh, so if they are losing a crowd, why throw more bad money after a loss? You know, so that's what farmers are facing today. So anyways, the Fed has already shot their last bullet with the 0% interest rate. So the only thing they have right now is QE to kind of boost this up, right? That That's all they have. So they can just print more and more. Right, right now, of course, things are low because no one has jobs, right? And so they have to kind of keep printing this money, kind of steam it back up. And everyone's scared. So even no matter what they give us, we're not going to go blow it off and be like, hey, dude, we don't know how long this is going to last, right? So we're going to keep in our emergency things fund, keep it on our mattress. You know, I don't know how long this thing is going to last, right? I don't have a job yet. No one's hiring. Everyone's still quarantined. And if this is this quarantine lasts for a year and a half, well, we're gonna keep it in our mattress for about a year and a half, right? And just kind of spend what we need, just get by, okay? And they, of course, they're like, dude, we want to boost this economy, the GDP's down, velocity's down. Let's keep printing more and more and more. We're like, cool. We just keep showing our mattresses because we're scared, right? We don't want to keep spending money. Uh, we don't know what's gonna happen. And as that happens, we're gonna first, you know, the, the deflation is gonna happen first, right? 
everyone's scared. No one's it's going to spend for losing. But it gets to a point where the, you know, the fan, you know, everyone's gonna start to feel comfortable. Like, hey, you know what? I have a hundred k in my account right now from all this QE and stimulus fund. Hey, I think it's time to spend it. You know, so that you come out and get the latest, you know, vacation and computer, iPad, iPhone, or whatever, whatever, car. And you're just like, hey, you know, let's do this, you know. And so as that happens, once you see that day happen, when you know where like everyone's at, like a, everyone's a, a, a six-figure earner just because, you know, you are uh, for do nothing. Uh, then then start to be scared, right? Uh, or it could get to the point where we're all like million broke millionaires later on. So once we're all like six-figure earners for doing barely nothing. <laughs> Uh, that's the day that we're gonna have a hyperinflation, okay? And when that happens, it's gonna be a different kind of famine. It's a, it's a different kind of famine where not that you don't have any money, it's more like you have so much of it and it's worth less, and all these prices are going higher than what you can afford, okay? So what to do? Well, studying. Um, let's go to the bigger known. So yeah, we don't know how long it's gonna last. You know, 08, it lasts about two years. So overestimate that this is like the actually a, a, a kick the can down the curb for 08. We kicked 08. We didn't, we didn't solve any problems from 08. Come 2020, uh, it's just a more blown up version of 08. Okay. So when will the hyperinflation come? We don't know, right? It's just it just depends on when we feel like we have so much cash in our account that you know we're gonna start spending it. Okay. All over the world, everyone's going through trouble. A lot of countries are printing all. Our, all of their dollars is kind of backed by our dollar so as we print more everyone else is just inflating theirs up with it okay and guess what they're going to probably start buying us goods too because we've been sending our stuff to china buying their stuff and sending money there and guess what it's going to come back to roost over in the u.s so what i've learned is that the biggest industries during the weimar germany during their hyperinflation was that you know agriculture did pretty good Anyone that had debt, like real estate, they were able to pay it all off easily because they had the money to do so because debt didn't grow, right? If you took that loan out, it's gonna be still 100K, 300K, but guess what? You have so much money stimulus coming in that you can just say, I'll pay off my 30 year mortgage, boom, done, and uh, be out of debt. So get into lots of debt, right? If hyperinflation is coming, right? Um, buy that. Thing, real estate whatever investment and uh, I'm sure the government will give you the money to um, make those payments or you know bail out renters and run they'll be able to pay you and so on and so forth okay which is why you kind of see real estate investors are doing well right during whatnot section 8 and all this other stuff right all right, anyways so these are probably the biggest uh, industries during hyperinflation. Of course, um, uh, gold and silver. I ho I do hold some, but I don't ho hold high hopes in it. You know, unless it gets real bad. But you know, I I don't think I'm gonna cash out the gold and silver. It's just more like hey, it's there. I don't know what's. Go I don't even know how, how I'm gonna sell the gold and silver when that happens. Uh, you'll probably most likely want food over gold and silver because you know if you're starving and hungry, you don't care about that piece of metal that doesn't do anything for you okay so is war coming i i think so with the um, with the, all the oil crashing because a lot of countries like saudi arabia venezuela i mean countries are basically fueled by oil and if that country can't make money they're gonna be mad <laughs> you know so um so there's gonna be uh, something there, okay? That uh, you know, American companies are are all crashing to, and all this other stuff. So uh, you know, it just basically costs too much to uh, to pull oil out than it, what is actually worth, okay? So supposedly, all right. So anyways, this is the information I found. And I'll just leave that as information. You know, you, you can call it controversy or listening to too many YouTube videos or too many internet stuff and freaking out for no reason, right? I'm just more like, hey, I'm just, it's just information. Um, maybe you could connect the dots later on, maybe it makes sense, maybe you could like, hey, this is, this is dumb or, you know, whatever, but I leave that up to you, okay? 
Uh, supposedly, this coronavirus was developed in the U.S. lab, and I'll put the videos of that there for you to watch. And from that, they already did a conference on the type coronavirus type virus. You watch out for it, but they've taken it down. And then this one lady went to China, and somehow I forgot the story. I was, it was late at night, but somehow she released it into Wuhan or whatever. Um, and then you know, there it is, you know. Uh, so China kind of blames us, but because it's a it was developed in our but then somehow, I don't know if they try to steal that and really, I don't know. I don't know what the, what the deal is. And so anyways, this released in China, okay? But it was created in the U.S. lab. All right, so. So U.S. blame China, China blames U.S. And I think it's, it's kind of the best way to kind of instigate or sell a war, right? We've been having trade wars and whatever, and trade imbalances. And it's just kind of like the 9-11, which I think it's home uh, inside job in Pearl Harbor. Uh, to make a case for war, okay? And a lot of families will want someone to pay for the lost ones, especially when they find that it's a it's a bioweapon that they've been developing and somehow, or maybe China developed it, I don't know, right? Or The uh, thing is, like, China plays a like, unconventional war uh, in a sense they don't follow the rules anymore. It's more like, hey, we're going to win no matter what. Putting spy chips into our U.S. Uh, our, our components uh, that we don't know about, even though people have reported it, like Google and Microsoft, like, hey, dude, China's parts has spy hardware in there. Um, but anyways, that's other stuff that you know. And, and it's, it's like you think about, it, I was like, hey, that's kind of smart, right? Like, if you just have everything's made in China, all your phones, there's probably some kind of chip in there, and you know they can control that. So the war is gonna be like ones and zeros, you know, where they can just take over stuff. And which is the, there's the whole thing about Huawei and 5G and all this other stuff and that, you know, we, we, we want to use them because it's a national security and all this other stuff. Okay. Alright, so anyways, um, but anyways, someone's going to want to pay, so we're going to be like, hey, you know what, China, you got to pay, we're going to, you know, you better pay up or, 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 or else, right, we're going to go kick butt. So anyways, uh, but we're going to hide the part that was developed in U.S., just like the WMD that we found in Iraq that had U.S. serial numbers on it. But we can't say that they have, that we found the weapons of mass destruction because they had U.S. serial numbers on them. And this was told to me, like, during a chat. It was a military guy. He was a captain in the Army. And he's like, yeah, there's a lot of half-troops out there. And it's like, dude, <laughs> you know, um, uh, yeah, we found it, but we can't say because it looks bad, right? Because it was, it was us that we sold it to, <laughs> So anyways, oh, oh, and how do we know? Because we sold it to them, right? So anyways, moving on. And this kind of goes with the um, the uh, economic hitman uh, stuff, uh, if you learn about it. Because we, uh, we, we try to get them to cooperate, but they wouldn't. So it kind of goes with like corruption. If they can't be corrupted, then uh, we eventually try to assassinate them. If we can't do that, then we eventually send the army. Okay. All right, so anyways. <clears throat> so what will, what will I do? Well, I'm, I guess, I mean, I live here. This is my home. I have to support the U.S. Empire. So I'm, uh, you know, I'm getting interested in farming, start a farm, take out a loan, you know, buy some real, into real estate. I'm sure they, they would like to, like that, get the money flowing, buy, you know, loan, just buy real estate, right? And, and I'm sure they're going to inflate the real estate prices and I'll get to ride that wave and like, then I get to charge rent. At a higher price and then make them work for it to pay it and I buy more properties that you know that they print out thin air and so on and so forth right that's the game I don't know that's just the game I mean it sucks but I'm like I guess I have to play it because if I don't they're not gonna get the money flowing right and you know that's not good for everyone else so it's just it's just the way it is I don't know I don't unless you have a better idea let me know okay um, yeah, and then you know you can create a company too. You can borrow money from thin air because uh, people want jobs, and as long as you uh, you pay them with a paycheck protection program, they'll give you money to pay your employees whether they're doing the job, or you got sales or not. Don't worry, they'll forgive the loan. Okay, they'll bail you out. Okay, and if it fails, we'll just get bailed out. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so, anyways. Um, so we have some ideas on this thing. I'm going to show you this uh, USDA 100% loan, no down, if you're willing to start a farm. 
So this is a skill you probably need to learn. And there's uh, you can do this for new farmers too. I think actually no, I think it's hundred percent uh for experienced farmers. But if you're a brand new farmer, uh, then it's five percent down. I don't know if they're gonna relax this. Maybe I think they might. USDA, um, because depending on, on how desperate it is, right? They they might be able to kind of tweak some things. Say, hey, you know what? It's all good. Stimulus money. Uh, go start a farm. Buy some buy some acreage, some cows, and whatever, and uh, just bring food to to the economy, right? And um, what is it? Here it is. Uh, start a farm. Start a farm. Where is it? Farm discovery tool. Let me show you where it was a five percent. Okay, let's say I want to. I want to start a farm. Okay. All right. Yes, I want a farm loan. Yes. Yes, Texas. Hood County. Actually, I want Erath County. That's a little, a little bit more. That's a little more terrain, I believe. I got a youth loan. Oh, what do I get? Uh, wait, oh, I don't think I want a youth loan. Are you looking for? No, I don't want that. No. Land purchase. Okay, I want to. Uh, I want to own and operate. Uh, I'll take. Okay, I'll be modest. <laughs> Texas, Erath. Okay. All right. So I get the direct farm ownership operating loan. Here's the loan process. And uh, here's the guide. How much money can I get? Uh, I can get up to forty thousand dollars in operating money. And uh, when I pay back, uh, forty years, and at like two percent something low. Who can apply? Downs, uh, oh shit! Oh no, getting farmers and ranchers. Oh, okay. You know, the only farmers ranch who are unable to get sufficient funds for ownership of the unique experience. For so, so that's what you have, that's why I'm kind of like starting now to say, hey, you know, I have a little bit of a experience here. Now, if you're a beginning farmer, you can then get a, a loan for five percent down. Okay. There it is. I think there was an, another site that was a little more, uh, a little more better to look at. Yeah, okay, we're going through this again. All right, so I think that's it for now. USDA, uh, check that out. You might want to like see see what that's all about, and you know what this loan thing is all about. If you want to start a farm or whatever. And there's probably some grants and stuff that they're you know giving money away for for um, rural development. I would probably want to check that out too myself. And some farm bill. What's this farm bill? Rural communities. Blah blah blah. Okay, cool. All right. So, anyways, back to the presentation. Yeah. So uh, you know, there's other things where you can actually just buy land, and then you can have a lease. Uh, sell a lease to hunters who want to hunt and say hey I have all these random animals there deer and whatever and you can charge two thousand a year ten thousand a year for exotics exotics which are like old ads and some other big game and you know and they're willing to pay that you know just so they can shoot down uh, whatever and so you own the land and you let them hunt and you, that pays for the the, the mortgage or whatever and just kind of lease the land uh, for the animals there okay and also you have water wells whatever fish you know whatever you know all kinds of stuff you can do all right so basically just to provide food i'm kind of interested in providing food and kind of like the aquaponic stuff little towers in people's homes uh you know feed for the animals like chicken feed and all this other stuff we're using um black soldier flies kind of looks interesting so then you use that to feed the fish and then uh, you know make food. So, anyways, yeah. So, you know, I don't want the U.S. fail, but we're built by the system, so we have to do what the government wants, and they need that insulating fiat dollar to flow. 
Okay, so and people want the money job that enslaves them and don't care or, or don't know how or, or don't know. You know, people want the money and they 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 need that to pay their bills because they're enslaved to that bill and so they have to do something down here to pay that guy and and so on and so forth. So, and that's the only way you know they, they know. So so because they're really reliant on the city, you know, the you know so if you grow your own food you kind of don't need to rely on the dollar to get the mark, but we're gonna support the dollar. <laughs> okay, so um, so we have to take loans, we have to provide jobs, create ideas, and just do it. So we're we're gonna probably just keep the home that that we have. If that fails, and they don't bail it out, then fine, we'll let them take it because you know whatever, right? And as long as we have a home to go to. Um, We'll probably keep that unless that's the the, the farm's paid off. Then I'll, I might move to the farm and kind of just sell this guy, this place. No, we'll see. So that's kind of the plan of what I'm 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 doing. Let me know what your thoughts are, what your plans are, and uh, if you just kind of resonate with what what you're thinking here on what to expect for the next year and a half to, to two years. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be totally different. Um, if people open up cities, I I think more deaths are gonna come. More people are gonna die. Uh, and I think I'm starting to see those spikes, especially in, in Los Angeles and just in California. It's really starting to pick up starting this month. So uh, May will be very interesting uh, coming up. So, all right, wish you well. I uh, will maybe make another video later on something else. Thanks.